Yeah, thank you for your help. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Samuel, working for CIB, and I'm going to talk about um, improvements we made to document signing and encryption in the last year. Um, yeah, I have two topics. The first is signature lines. What is that? Why is, this, is it useful? And what did we change there? And the second is open PGP support. Yeah, part of the second topic was already held at the LibreOffice conference. Was there? Might sound. Um, yeah, you might have already heard parts of that, but yeah. Okay, let's start with signature lines. Uh, signature lines are a visual representation of the document's signature. I'll show that in a document later. Um, so like you have in a handwritten document, you put no, your signature in a de, um, predefined field. Um, you can also have this for digital documents and connect it with a real signature so that um, you see whether the signature is valid or whether the document was changed after that. Yeah, that's the idea. Combine it, this handwritten signature you know from um, paper documents with the digital signatures we have in LibreOffice. Um, Microsoft Word and Excel also have this feature, so it was also um, an attempt to improve interoper interoperability. Um, yeah, so what's working there since LibreOffice 6.0, the OOXML import is working. This is the only thing I can show now because I don't have the master build on this laptop, sorry. Um, and in the current master build, there is also full X OOXML round trip working, so you can save them again. Um, ODF export import. Yeah, ODF export is working, import is to be done. And you can generate new signature lines. There's a dialog for that and edit ex existing ones, of course. And um, you, it should be able that you then can also sign these signature lines. This is also to be done and uh, hopefully done until 6.1. Yeah, let's have a quick look. So how do we access my media? Oh, we can also go to the, to the folder there, maybe. Yeah. And open the other one? This yeah. one. What? Mm. You have a master build here? Yes, but it's, it's here if you want. But I don't know if I will be able to. Oh, let me see. Maybe I can just start mine. Can I open a terminal here? <coughs> what do you want? A terminal? Yes. Uh, how do I make this back sl uh, slash, forward slash? This one. Okay, um, so we have a new uh, menu entry in the writer. It's insert. Um, uh, signature line. Then you get this dialog. You can enter suggested signer. That's me then. No title. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, then you can specify whether the one who signs this can add comments and whether the sign date should be shown. And then you can add uh, comments, please sign here. And what you get is just the shape, which looks like this uh, traditional signature line. Um, and this is um, 
Yeah, and then you send the document to someone and ask him, please sign it. And he doesn't have to print it and scan it again with his handwritten signature, but he then can, um, this is not implemented yet, but he should be able to uh, right-click, sign, and then he gets the digital uh, certificates and keys he has, and he can choose his personal key or certificate he w wants to use for signing, and then sign. It's um, like you have here with the digital signatures, Yeah, you go to this dialog, sign the document, select your certificate if you have one. Yeah, there even are a few. Um, yeah, and then this shape will change and it will um, display the name you entered. You might also specify an image, like if you want your handwritten signature there. And then when loading the document, um, the signature will be evaluated when the signature is valid, the document wasn't changed, it will load the signature, and if not, it will load, um, uh, like it will strike through the signature, and you will see on the first side that this document was changed and the signature is no longer valid. Yes, that's the first part. Uh, questions to this topic so far, signature lines? Yes, um, I even had prepared two documents, but I can't load them at the moment. So if you just change one character or whatever, um, yeah, this already worked before with the digital signatures we have. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, hopefully 6.1. Uh, it's a, what do I say? Um, it's a customer that sponsored this. I don't know if I can name him, but um, yeah, so this will most probably make it into 6.1. Okay, second topic, open PGP support. Um, yeah. Earlier on, you could use um, X509 certificates in LibreOffice to sign the document. Um, we added with uh, support from the German BSI um, uh, support for OpenPGP. So you can use your exi existing keys you have and you use for email maybe or whatever. And there's also YubiKey, this uh, USB um, thing you can insert with which has keys um, yeah you don't need to go to some certificate authority and get a certificate you can just uh, generate your key and sign with that um, yeah so this is the current status signing worked on 5.4 on Linux only this was the first thing we did and since, since LibreOffice 6.0 released a few days ago um, this is on all three major platforms, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, and it's also ODF conformant. So we didn't break your standard. <laughs> it's not your standard, of course, but <laughs> you're careful. Um, well, strictly speaking, it's extended uh, ODF conformance. We had to extend a little bit for, uh, for the encryption stuff. Yeah, for the encryption stuff, we had to extend. That's also in my notes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Then uh, encrypting with open PGP keys was the second feature. Um, yeah, so you can not only sign, you can encrypt so that nobody can see the document unless um, you encrypted it for him or her. Yeah, this needed, as Torsten said, an extension to ODF, but will be proposed or is already proposed to the TC. I don't know. Yeah. Currently, LibreOffice is the only ODF consumer implementing this. Um, yeah, but we hope that more will follow. Svante, it's your take with uh, ODF Toolkit, and there are a bunch of OpenOffice developers here. Yeah. Okay, so how does it work? Uh, LibreOffice does mainly uh, not very much uh, with the actual signing. 
Uh, we use existing toolkits like the GPG agent and the GPG program that is already there. Um, so we also can't make, can't make big mistakes with the actual signing process. Um, yeah, it's, um, there is some inter-process communication between the two LibreOffice and the, um, the GPG agent. We use the GPG me library, that's a C library for accessing, um, yeah, for using this in, in, uh, signature and encryption stuff. We actually use GPG me CPP or PP, and that's a small uh, C++ wrapper around this. Yeah, so our work was on the LibreOffice side, integrating the existing programs Yeah, so we have no extra key store. Like uh, when you open this uh, signature dialog, it will list um, your existing OpenPGP keys you have used for mail or whatever before. Um, and you also see it lists both X509 certificates, the first two and the rest. This is screenshot from Torsten. Um, OpenPGP keys, you select your one. Um, also, we have no certificate manager integrated. We don't go, want to go that route. There are many good uh, applications for that, but we um, help users to find them. We have a start certificate manager button in this dialog, and when you click it, uh, you, it will open Seahorse on GNOME or uh, on KDE there is, I don't know, Cleopatra, and on Windows it will open GPG for Win. Is that right? So it's a configuration parameter within, uh, within the application. Uh, Which program do you to, to launch? I think at the current state it just checks a hard-coded list and takes the first one it finds. Maybe we added a configuration. I'm not sure. Yeah, on Windows you would. Yeah, on Windows you would need to install this separately. We don't bundle it, and on Linux, of course, it's provided by your package manager. Yeah, then we also made some UI improvements. Um, before the signature, the status of the current signature was only displayed very uh, small in the status line. And there was also a dialog popping up when the, uh, the signature was invalid. And we improved that and used this colored uh, info bars. Um, yeah, the one below is even from a newer version. It has an icon also. I think Heiko is responsible for that, thanks. Um, yeah, so you see at the first side with the color and the text if your signature is valid, if it is valid but uh, the certificate could not be validated. Uh, that might be the case if you have a, a key which is not trusted in the GPG um, wording and it is dark red if the signature is broken. That means the document has been changed. Okay, uh, yeah, let's have a small look at this, or, yeah, before, oh, I have five more minutes. Even ten. Okay. Yeah, I just take a blank document, insert some blind text. How does it work? Yeah, oh, it doesn't work. Anyway. Uh, line text, then I want to sign this document. Can I just use your existing keys, open PGP? I think I have keys. I saw there some. Ah, there are a few. I don't know from where they come. <laughs> okay, they are empty. <laughs> yeah. So I just choose one key. Um, you can also configure it to use a default key. There is a config option for that. Then I click sign. Yeah, okay, I don't have this passphrase. <laughs> I don't know if I have it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and then you can imagine this nice info bars popping up. Okay, um, that's about the signing. No big deal. Um, same procedure. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, and then the encryption that's integrated in the safe dialog in all platforms, in the native dialogs even. Uh, okay, I need to save as to get the dialog again. And there is encrypt with GPG key, an option for that. Um, I never choose that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now I get another list uh, with all foreign keys that uh, you have. Yeah, because I, c I can encrypt, of, of course, for other people where I only have the public key. So I want to encrypt this for Cornus. Yeah. Okay, and in theory this works. In practice, this is not my laptop and it's not configured here. <laughs> yeah, but you see the general procedure. Yeah, so, so why, why is this failing? So a GPT says if you don't trust the key, if you haven't signed the key, it refuses to encrypt to that person. So <coughs> what you should do then is go to your, um, your certificate manager of trust and first then trust the key so that the people you want to encrypt. So it's a good thing to do anyway. Okay, let me repeat this for the uh, camera. So the problem here was that the key is not trusted and we need to go to the certificate manager and um, sign this key with our own key. So it won't fail anymore. Maybe we can improve the message a little bit. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I can show one more thing, the settings dialog. Yeah, so there are uh, three new options here. The, you can specify a default signing key and a default encryption key. And this checkbox when encrypting documents always encrypt to self uh, makes absolute sense because if you only encrypt for someone else, you can't open the doc document yourself anymore. So. If you disable that, you should be knowing what you are doing. <laughs> Will it then, um, yeah. Um, if you want to show the, the status line, um, I do have a lever of six hour with the GPT, so if you want, you can show it with my notebook. Okay, Thank, should we do that? If someone is interested. In it, so. I, I'm next, and I give you as many minutes as you need. You can connect, okay. Uh, I think there are. How does this, this work exactly, Torsten? So it looks like with emails, when you send it as a thank you, then you can encrypt with the asymmetric transport encryption. It generates a random key and then this symmetric encryption with that. And then it encrypts this one symmetric uh, key uh, to all the recipients. Das ist schon signiert, ne? Okay, so here you can see this actually working. This is a signed document.
Okay, so here you can see the user interface live uh, with the, the info bar. And this was there before. This small icon says the document signature is okay. And it also has this signed uh, in brackets in the title bar. Yeah, but that's very easy to miss. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. How well yeah. accepted are the uh, signatures uh, documents? Is it legally accepted? I can't say anything about the legal situation. The customer uses internally the uh, signature just for the own company to sign the document and share it with, uh, within the same company? Uh, I don't think they use it yet. They just wanted to encourage use of encrypted and signed documents in Germany and worldwide. It would be really cool if a tax income declaration can be done with the browser. Yeah, you can actually. If you use the proper certificate for it, issued by a legal body which um, issues certificates for uh, digital signatures, you can. There do you live. <laughs> just to, uh, um, <laughs> You can do it in the whole EU. EU so that's no problem. Should be no problem. Uh, just X5 hardware. Okay, thank you. Let's close then. <laughs>